<clears throat> the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, Romans chapter 16, <clears throat> verses 25 through 27. Uh, we are uh, in the consideration of them, these verses. So uh, turn there, we'll read them, and uh, see if we can wrap up Romans today. Make, up, make an accomplishment here. All right, let's take the usual time to uh, check ourselves, be sure that we are <clears throat> in fellowship so that we can get the maximum benefit from the information. This is the word of God. This matters, all of it matters. It was not put in here for filler. All of it is critical. All scripture is profitable. And uh, so here we are, and uh, let's consider what we have in front of us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you that our faith in Jesus Christ has overcome the world, just as Jesus overcame the world. We thank you for this opportunity, once again, to have the resources, the wherewithal, to assemble ourselves together and take in the mind of Christ. Bless our time together, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, this is the extended final doxology. Doxology means uh, uh, giving glory to God, uh, and uh, doxos, the word for, for glory. <clears throat> now, here's what Paul said as his final words to the Romans. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret for long ages past, but now is manifested, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, made known to all the nations, the secret is made known to all the nations, uh, leading to obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be the glory forever. All right, we noted in this regard, we got down to uh, the point where uh, in point 15, of your notes, approximately where I stopped. The gospel is totally compatible with what he calls the revelation of the mystery, <clears throat> which is a reference to the present dispensation of the church age. Ephesians chapter three, one and following, expounds on this mystery. Paul was the primary individual through whom this mystery was revealed. Ephesians 3. For this reason, writing to the Ephesians, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus. You know, it's, it's, it's about your perspective when you get in the plan and are adjusted to circumstances. At the time of the writing of this, he was imprisoned in Rome under house arrest. He'd, he'd been there two years. That didn't stop his ministry. That didn't stop the output of the word of God. <clears throat> People cannot shut down the proclamation of the word of God. It will get out there in the face of, you know, top government officials who are opposed to it. So he doesn't say, I'm a prisoner of Caesar. He was. He says, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. 
if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you. That by revelation, there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. Apparently, there was another Ephesian letter. <clears throat> that by revel uh, that I written before in brief. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Now, this does not have to do with his person, his identity. That is revealed uh, in the Old Testament, clearly, and, of course, in the New Testament. So that's not the part that he is talking about. The part he is talking about, well, we'll get to it. The mystery of Christ which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men. As it adds, it was made known, but not, it wasn't brought into the full focus of, of their ability to understand its makeup, much less who the recipients were of this, which in other generations was not made to the sons of men as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in or by the Spirit. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's how you get, that's how you, that's how a person is, is brought in to this, I'll call it, this realm, the salvation adjustment of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints. What he is saying here is, he considered himself to be the least deserving of those that were in, a, in the kind of a position he was in because of his pre-salvation behavior towards Christians, Jewish Christians, where he was persecuting them with every fiber of his being and doing everything to try to shut down the church and this movement. Incarceration, anything went. As far as he was concerned, they, they needed to be killed when he was struck down on the Damascus Road by a blinding light that took away his vision completely stone blind momentarily for a few days where he got this voice out of heaven. He actually got saved up in Damascus. He didn't get saved on the Damascus road, the road to Damascus. He was saved in Damascus. He sat in a room, couldn't see a thing, and he had to process what he heard out of heaven. Saul, Saul, why do you continue to kick, use the analogy to an animal that you're trying to get in a certain place? Uh, why, do you, why do you continue to kick against the prods? Because his conscience was in the background pushing him, hitting him. There was things he couldn't refute with regard to Jesus Christ. And it was eating on him. And he was fighting it. And uh, <clears throat> to me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable. That means once you understand this, it's beyond your ability to fathom the riches that come to a believer and in particular, a believer who gets on track with the truth and sticks with it and doesn't treat it like yesterday's food. Not that that can't be good. <laughs> the unfathomable riches of Christ. And to bring to light what is the administration, or we could translate, and to bring to light what is the dispensation, I prefer that because that's in our terminology, of the mystery, 
which for long ages has been hidden in God, who created all things, so that the manifold, manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. The angels didn't even know about the details here. How'd they learn it? Through the proclamation of the apostles that he just mentioned. They were in part in the dark, even having access to heaven. They didn't know about this mystery, the present dispensation of the royal family. This is the super dispensation. It's the best one to be in, even including being a believer when Christ rules and reigns on this earth during the thousand years, as fabulous as that is. It's this dispensation that elevates us to the position of royal family, bride of Christ, body of Christ, and so that alone makes for an elite category. Royalty. Royalty always is an elite category within the general population. This was in accordance with the eternal purposes which he carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay? The gospel, regardless of dispensation, see, if you're not, if you're not dispensationally oriented, you really are, uh, you know, with, with a, a, a ship without a rudder. You, you, you really are just thrown all over the place. That's why there's so much messed up stuff out there in denominationalism and other, others because they don't understand dispensations. It's easy. There's the dispensation of the Gentiles. It runs from Adam to Abraham. And with the call of Abraham, a new dispensation kicks in the age of Israel. It has phases, categories within it, the age of the patriarchs, the age of the law, on down to Christ. And then, of course, the church age. The age of Israel was interrupted. As I've said many times, the believers that were on the day, uh, 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 at the beginning of the church age were told to go to the upper room and pray for 10 days and the spirit would come and they'd be baptized into this new entity, spirit baptism. <clears throat> that was 33, uh, 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 that, uh, uh, on, that, on that date, on the day of Pentecost, on the Jewish calendar, this came down. As I've said over and over again, these, these believers, all the, all, all the original disciples were there. Uh, the uh, well, not the 12, the 11, Mary. There's 120 believers in that room. Must have been a good sized room. Praying for 10 days. As I've said before, that morning they woke up in the church age and went to bed. In the, I woke up in the age of Israel and went to bed in the church age. And it's been, the church age has been rolling on ever since then, all the way through. So that's the dispensation, that's the dispensation of Israel, which was put on hold. Once the rapture occurs, the dispensation of Israel has seven more years to complete, according to the doctrine of Daniel, 70 weeks of years. <clears throat> and then, of course, the final one, the millennium, with all, this all its particulars, the thousand years. <clears throat> the gospel, regardless of dispensation, remains the same, which topic Paul has made quite apparent in this epistle. Eight, here and in Ephesians 3, 5 and 9, which we read, and Colossians 1, 26, uh,
That is the mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but now has been manifested to the saints. Paul declares this mystery is that which has been kept secret from long ages past. 19, the secretive part is not how individuals are saved. That's the same regardless of dispensation. It's always faith in the Messiah, whether it is looking ahead, those that looked ahead believed that he was going to come, be the Savior, etc., and those who believed in him are saved, just like we believe, even though the reality has come and fulfilled uh, <clears throat> that. So salvation is the same through the dispensation. It, it never changes. And it's the easiest thing to do to get the most and escape the worst. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. And it's open to everybody. There are no exceptions. So when you believed in Christ, you're in the plan. What you do with it, that's uh, after the fact, does not, uh, does not affect your salvation. It just affects your reward package and how you can live in this life and uh, keep your sanity and, and see where things are headed so you're not so darn discouraged by it all like so many people are looking at the condition that uh, <clears throat> this country has got itself into. And you get your eyes on what's this is all working together and it being advanced. God is in control. It doesn't appear to some and they give lip service to him sometimes. But most of these people out here, they don't, they don't understand what's going on in the Middle East. They don't, they don't see that Israel, the, the conditions under which God brought Israel and, and is bringing Jews back to their homeland. They don't, they don't see this for... They, they, they haven't been exposed to these prophecies that God, that the Lord, the one who scattered them, okay, the last one he used was the Romans. He's used the Syrians and the Romans and the Babylonians to scatter Jews all over the earth, all over every, every among all the nations. I've told you this over and over. That, that it was nice to see it live when we were in Israel and to see Jewish people who had Asian characteristics, African, of course, European and American. That was not, that was good. They, they, they brought their, they, they, they'd intermarried, so they picked up the, the, the genetic, uh, uh, the physical characteristics of these people. So if you went into an Asian restaurant, you know, they're talking Asian. But when white Jews come in there, they're all they're talking Hebrew. You can tell what race you are, what gender you are with your DNA. They said they've developed... They're, 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 they're close to developing a way to identify uh, when they find bones, skeletal bones buried, whether it's a man or a woman, in the DNA. It's, it's quite technical, but they can figure it out. <clears throat> what Old Testament prophets knew was that Israel would be demoted set aside, to use sports analogy and football, benched in favor of a new people of God as the torchbearers of God's plan. All right, that's, we saw that in Romans 10. That was known by the prophets of old. That was revealed to them. Another one of those for the, for the Jews and, and for everyone else. Did you read, did you read your old, the prophets you say you revere? Did you read them? Did you read in there that in the last days, 
as he has scattered them. Now a shepherd, a normal shepherd, obviously never scatters his sheep. But this shepherd did. Righteously scattered them and kicked them out of the land for their apostasy, negative volition. And he used these pagan Roman Gentiles to do it. Because they would not turn to the Lord and get it together, so they got evicted. And, they, and over the process of time, Jews have been scattered everywhere. Uh, I, was, uh, I was listening online to the, uh, he, he's an older fellow now, the Neil Diamond coming to America. He had a picture up there of a young girl, black and white picture. He says, that's my grandmother. She immigrated to the United States by herself when she was a very young person. And he went on to say that she was responsible. And she, she came out of Kiev, uh, Russia, and then she made a long trip to another spot uh, in Europe, and then she came over here on a boat, ship. And he said, uh, well, he was, he, was, he was praising her as the, you know, for, for all his success. She was a big factor in his life. So they were scattered everywhere. And that's in the Old Testament prophecies. And when the time is right, he's going to regather them and reverse the process. It is a law, it is a long, drawn out, and for a lot of Jews, very painful. And all this pressure on Jews worldwide in this country, this the rise of anti-Semitism. They need to get back to the land. Well, they need, obviously, to get saved, but that's not going to happen in mass for the Jews until after the rapture. That's when God will remove blindness from Jacob. Jacob referring not to the historical individual, but to the tribes that he fathered. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Romans 10, 19 and 20. But I say, surely Israel did not know, did they? First Moses said, I will make you jealous. This is as early as Moses. I will make you jealous by that which is not a nation. And by a nation without understanding, will I anger you? And Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. This is the general pattern of the Gentile world up until the, the beginning of the church age. And then there's a lot of positive volition out. It, it took time and, and it, it developed the history of the church and uh, missionary activity into various countries. You name one, missionaries have got there, Christian ones, through the church age. I think that's, uh, that's something behind this uh, St. Patrick's Day deal. As I recall, I, 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 I probably shouldn't say anything, but I'll read in, a, in a, a, the uh, Dictionary of, of Church History that he was a captive of, uh, of a war between the Irish and the, and the Scots, and he, he was a captive, and he went in there and evangelized. I think it was the Scots. St. Patrick. God uses all kinds of different things to advance and get his word out there. I was found by those who did not seek me. I became manifest to those who did not ask for me. But as for Israel, he says, all the day long, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. That's in the Old Testament, quoted here in the New Testament. Do Jews read this? Do they read this? They hold Moses up and Isaiah and all these prophets. Did they? You know, it's, it's, it's just amazing. 
that people can, who, who say that they believe the Bible, uh, this is God's word. It's just like that. They, 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 they stumble over it because it leads you to who and what the Messiah is. And the Old Testament said that when he arose, when he come on the scene with all the credentials, even right down to the little tiny hamlet he was born in, outside Jerusalem, Bethlehem, everything was there. He, and it says in the New Testament, he came to his own, and his own received him not. I always remember that when, I, when, you, when you experience rejection by people. He experienced rejection on a big scale. And he had all the credentials. And, uh, and then it's like all the leaders, they're oblivious, Jewish leaders. They're oblivious to easy, even on earth. But there are a couple Jewish people that weren't. When he came, to, uh, uh, which was customary, to, to, to bring a male child uh, for circumcision and, and, then, uh, well, and then bring him to a special event in the temple, baby, baby Jesus being brought in there by his parents, And the elderly man who held him in his arms, the one that, you know, had prayed that, see, he, he knew the timing, what, he even knew the timing. And he prayed that he wouldn't die until he saw the salvation of the Lord. As he held this, as he held the infant Jesus in his arms. It's in, it's in Luke. So there were those that knew, without excuse. It's, so it's kind of like today, isn't it? All the things, all these Christians, for instance, are missing. And the Bible's right in front of them. Why haven't they figured these doctrines out? If somebody's out there got it figured out, great. But I don't come across it. I don't run into it. These, these signature doctrines, I like to call them. Our first big breakthrough at Maranatha Church, the doctrine of the United States and prophecy. Now, where do you see that out there in the fundamentalist world? Oh, they'll say we're bad and we can come under God's wrath, and, but they don't, they don't, it, and that's in the Old and in the New Testament. Oh. And uh, a one that was completely original with me, uh, the doctrine of the Antichrist, identity. The people have been, people been talking about that for a long time. It's right in your Bible. Can you not read Revelation 17 and those key verses? Beyond that, I can't help you. It's Alexander the Great. By the way, Netflix has a movie about him now. It's called Alexander, the making of a God. I saw the trailer on it, but I planned it. I'm going to try to view it myself. The making of a God. He's coming back. It all fits like a glove. All of it. I don't make this stuff up. The two good guys that come back are Moses and Elijah. Individuals of that stature stuck into a modern world out there where John the Baptist preached and their ministry is directed towards calling Israel back to God. John had some success. A lot of people came out to his baptism, but it didn't turn the nation around. <clears throat> and of course now, the doctrine of the flat earth. Other signature doctrine is refining and defining, though I got it originally from Bob Thiem, the doctrine of the blood of Christ. This just sets fundies off like something, like you're an apostate corrupt person because you can't tell the difference between a representative and a direct analogy. Those are, those are some of my hold high. You know, those, those, are, those, 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 are, those are signature doctrines for here and uh, all the rest of it's important too, of course, but. Uh, 
uh, Romans 11, 25 and 26. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed. Well, that's my deal here. I don't want you to be in the dark about stuff. To be uninformed of this mystery. So that you will not be wise in your own estimation. That a partial hardening has happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, just as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. <clears throat> and uh, Matthew 21, 43. Jesus said, publicly, out in their face. Uh, Jesus does this to them too. You know, you see, the, these are people who, they go through the entire Old Testament in their synagogue services from the beginning to the end, they read every book. I saw one guy on a line over there, he was a Jewish evangelist out in the streets of Jerusalem talking to people. He wasn't jumping up on a podium and, you know, he was just, he was asking them questions. He asked, uh, he said, why are we no longer, when we read through the book of Isaiah, why do we skip Isaiah chapter 53? We go from 52 to 54. What's, what's so bad about that chapter? What's it talking about? That seems to be quietly off limits. It is a clear presentation of the Messiah and his sufferings and his resurrection. It's right there. Okay, you can say today, some people, they're so entrenched in it, their pride factor. Well, you better get over your pride factor. You want to have that all through all eternity in the lake of fire? I don't think so. Jesus said to them, I'm reading 42. Did you never read in the scriptures? This is sarcasm. Of course they've read it. But you just read it. You didn't process it. The stone which the builders rejected, using an analogy to the, 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 the keystone, the cornerstone of the temple. The first stone set. And the whole building Come, is related to this, 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 this special stone called the keystone. The, uh, the foundation stone at the base. The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief cornerstone. Chief cornerstone. That stone represents Christ. Didn't you read that they would reject that stone? See, when they build a temple, they go, everything has to be just right. And cutting these huge stones for the foundation stones <coughs> out of the right material, which they quarry down in Hebron, and bring it up there, <clears throat> and these are heavy. These weigh many tons. And set that right where it's supposed to sit. And work off of that. And, and it, it would be like, it would be like, the, like you, had a, you, had a, you had a stone that size-wise, material-wise, everything was perfect. We don't want that. This came about from the Lord and is marvelous in our eyes. So verse 43. So Jesus, he says, I'm going to draw a conclusion off of this. Therefore, I say to you, Israelites, Jews, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. It hurts to fall sometimes. Really hurts. 
but, um, uh, but on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. That's the unbeliever. Paul fell hard on that stone, didn't he? When his world was turned upside down, or right side up, better yet. But as to who and what this new people of God would be, is part that was hidden, is the part that was hidden from the Old Testament prophets. Uh, as you might have heard, the book we're going to next. First Peter. Here in First Peter, uh, Uh, so that's chapter one, by the way. It's First Peter, First Peter one ten and twelve. As to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries. They wanted to know who this new people was. They they had no they had no question that Israel was going to be temporarily set aside. But you have to explain all that. Yes, individual Jews like all the 12, uh, individual Jews can become believers, but they're a part of a new organization or a new entity called the church. <clears throat> and the Jewish thing, <clears throat> it's just got these externalities, but it is, they, are, they aren't the people that's out there representing God before the nations like they used to be. It's a new people. And what the, what the Old Testament prophets couldn't determine, because if, you if you're looking at it, you're saying, I wonder what other, what, what other nation is going to be a chosen nation. You could just guess all day. But it never came to your conclusion that, no, it's going to be a nation, a people taken from all the nations, wherever there's believers. Doesn't matter. Race or any other factor. They, they, that they couldn't figure out. Seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. What was revealed to them in verse 12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. They knew something special was coming in the things which have now been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. I, I, I've often wondered how much information has been kept from angels and they're dependent on those on earth to reveal it through that system rather than just getting it directly in heaven. They too have been students of this unfolding event. <clears throat> the mention of a new people of God in the wake of Israel's apostasy is found in Hosea 2.23b. And I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people. That's That's as I said, Gentiles from all the nations, everywhere. The people who are not a people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. These pagans and all that's in these cultures, wherever believers have come out of these backgrounds, there's Christians in India, there's Christians in China, there's Christians, on and on it goes. There's, there's nations that are actually uh, ruled by Christians in Africa. Some of them are ruled by very anti-Semitic types like South Africa. They're hardcore against it. But there are Christians within their society that don't agree with this. You gotta like the prophet Hosea. Well, 
He didn't choose this. God chose him. Anna. And told him, you're gonna, your, life, your marital life is going to be reflect what I'm, deal, what I'm having to deal with with Israel. Now he's a prophet. Some prophets had to do some unusual stuff besides just go out and talk and preach and proclaim a message. Some of them. <clears throat> Here's what you're going to do. You're going to marry a Jewish prostitute. You're going to make her your wife. It's still a divine institution. Okay? And your marriage will go on for a while. This is a whole picture of God bringing the Jews and, and giving them a special place. The Jews are called God's wife in the Bible, to use the analogy from the institution. <clears throat> They're the responders. Anyway, and uh, you're going to marry her. You can read the book. And she's going to go back to her ways. And you're going to give her a bill. You're going to give her a bill or certificate of divorce. And you're, but you're going to stay single. You're not going. To, you're not allowed to marry. That's it. So that's a picture of Israel going astray. And down the road, after I don't know how much time elapsed. You're going to run into her again. She's going to be on a slave block like you'd buy a woman, buy a servant. They had those, you know. And she's going to be there and she probably isn't, and she probably doesn't look like she once did. She's down and out. You're going to go up there and you're going to put, put the money out and take her home. And they, that, that happened and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> all to illustrate casting Israel off for being unfaithful to the max and then bringing back Israel because he cannot permanently cast them off. Let's take our break. <laughs>